scientist, uh, an extremely accomplished macrophage biologist. You can find one author papers in prestigious journals by CNAC in the uh, late 70s and early 80s on agents such as Leishmania, Francisella, Mycobacterium, among other things. She's been a CSO in industry. She's been the president of American Society of Microbiology. She is currently the owner of a biotech company. I don't know how many other people in the room own a company. Um, I think that's quite admirable. Um, she uh, was the organizer, the key leader of getting the American Academy of Microbiology to hold a colloquium on paratuberculosis, to fund it, to make it happen. And uh, as a result of all her efforts, she was then saddled with the burden of having to edit a whole bunch of disparate comments from all kinds of people who had very divergent views into this uh, document that many of you have read. And I insist that uh, if we all do not agree with the contents, we do agree that she really put some of the issues in focus. Um, so I really look forward to hearing Carol's talk. She brings an outside perspective to ICP and hopefully will give us some guidance on where we can go. Um, maybe she'll even give us some tasks for the next ICP meeting. Thanks, Carol. Thank you, Marcel. Um, actually, I've been here for the full length of the meeting. It's been really an awesome meeting. I, I have seen more pictures of cows than I think I could ever remember in my life. And it's, it's something that I would be able to bring home to the people who work on humans and say that there are parallel issues between cows and humans that I would never have su suspected. Um, the, the article, actually, where's that thing? Yeah. This is my, so I'm going to hold on to this because uh, what I want to talk about a little bit is how we got to, how I got to where we are today in this talk. Um, we did organize this meeting, let's see, how do we do that? Um, the American Academy of Microbiology allowed us to organize a meeting on a single agent. This doesn't usually happen, they usually like to pick big, broad issues, but we thought it was important enough to convene a colloquium in June of 2006. So many of the issues that were prevalent in 2006 regarding MAP and human disease have been researched over the last three years, and, and there are a number of posters that uh, and talks that have really addressed some of the issues that we didn't uh, recognize as having data at that time. So the question that the colloquium addressed was whether MAP had evolved to infect human gastrointestinal tissues and whether once it was there it could actually cause disease. Um, it, it was not meant to be a colloquium that made any conclusions. The, in, in fact, the whole purpose of the colloquium was to ask what do we know, what do we don't know, and what kind of research program should we encourage the funders to develop for us to answer the questions that are unknown. There were actually 20, only 28 participants. This is the way the colloquium is run. They divide them into two groups, and then each group addresses a series of questions. And then uh, at the end, we talk about the, the answers that are in common between the two groups. And I can tell you there, have <laughs> there was quite contentious discussion. Uh, we had microbiologists, human geneticists, immunologists, molecular biologists, food microbiologists, diagnostic developers, veterinarians, public health officials, uh, USDA people, gastroenterologists, and patients, and virtually nobody agreed on anything. It was awesome. Uh, the discussions were exciting, were, were uh, stimulating, and uh, were a nightmare to uh, discuss in a single document. Um, we could probably have made this five times bigger had we included all of the discussion. Um, so, in the, in the early debate on, on Sunday evening, Dr. Bull uh, mentioned that there were a number of factors that did not support the existence of a link between MAP and human disease. And, and uh, we basically said in, in this document and in all of our discussions, we will use Crohn's disease as, a, as an example of human disease. But the real issue is, does MAP infect humans, and if it infects humans, infects humans, can it cause any disease at all? CD being the more controversial and exciting uh, because of the controversy disease itself. So there were, in fact, some things which we could all agree 
uh, were unknown at that time, including the fact that the people who worked with uh, Neoni's disease infected cattle didn't seem to have any more CD than others. There are, in fact, dissimilarities in the clinical and pathological presentations of these two diseases. Uh, at that point, cell-mediated immune responses to MAP had not been demonstrated in CD patients, and there were no systemic studies, but really nobody had been able to report consistently worse uh, Crohn's disease in the presence of the biological inhibitors of TNF-alpha. Um, and in controlled clinical trials, strangely or not, the CD patients undergoing six months of antibiotic therapy had short-term effects but did not have a sustained response to the drugs and they relapsed after two days in a similar percentage as treated in, in, in the treated and the control groups. So now in 2009, we skip forward three full years, a lot of people have been asking a lot of questions and, and uh, today we heard that uh, in fact um, people who hang around animals that are shedding loads of, of uh, M. avium paratuberculosis. And, and did you see that fecal stain for acid fast bacteria? That was awesome. Uh, there, there are probably more bacteria in there that are MAP than any other type of bacteria. Um, so this study demonstrated that if you have prolonged exposure to MAP infected goats, you can actually come down with disease that have, that looks quite similar, at least in symptomology, to Crohn's disease. And the longer the contact, the more likely the goat herder was to acquire a map. And what that says to me, in the conclusion of that study, is that there may be genetic propensities to develop Crohn's disease or IBD that we can identify in humans. But if you're exposed to enough pathogen for a long enough period of time, you can override that genetic propensity or, uh, for resistance and you can come down with um, an M. avium infection, M. avium paratuberculosis infection that results in clinical symptoms. So another fact that didn't support the existence of the link at that time was that cell-mediated immune responses to MAP or MAP antigens were not demonstrated, but Ingrid shows some very nice studies where isolated T cells from biopsies of patients with Crohn's disease and, and also colitis and control patients all uh, had, were able to uh, uh, produce T cells that could respond to various antigens and that the T cells of CD patients proliferated to MAP antigens much greater in much greater frequency than the ulcerative colitis T cells. All clones uh, responded to MAP from the T cells of four CD patients and some also to other mycobacteria, which not, would not be a surprise. And all the T cell clones produced in gamma and IL-17 to MAP stimulation, which has been a, a, a sort of a hallmark of what's going on in MAP disease. Uh, the confirmatory studies reported at this meeting and at this session were that uh, we can now identify MAP in muscle tissue of naturally infected cattle. And in this study, uh, Lots of cows slaughtered had JD or other major problems, and of all of those cattle, 66% had MAP and GI tissues. That's a little disturbing because many of the other ones, most of the, the, the cattle were slaughtered for other reasons. And you could culture MAP from the diaphragm tissues of six of the animals, that's nearly 20%. Uh, so that we can now say that it's possible to that infected meat as well as milk and cheese and potentially potable water may be a source of exposure for humans. Uh, also, genetic polymorphisms were associated with development of Crohn's disease. We had a very nice study with the odds ratio of two alleles of CARD15 and MAP uh, was uh, greater than four, and genetic factors can be associated with CD, but as I as I suspect, if you're hanging around for a very long time with a lot of shedders, you should um, watch your bowel movements. <laughs> so, um, and finally, uh, Dr. Greenstein mentioned that antibiotics can inhibit MAP growth in vitro, and both um, INH and paraminosalicylic acid inhibit MAP, MAP growth, and these are clearly 